Sometimes boxing fans confused. Who is the champion? Right now, it's just one answer. Klitschko. Vladimir and Vitaly Klitschko are the undisputed kings of the heavyweight division. Earlier this summer, younger brother Vladimir defeated David Hay and fulfilled the Klitschko's dream of collectively owning all four recognized title belts. Tonight, it's Vitaly's turn to grab the spotlight, defending his one-quarter slice of the heavyweight crown. Following a four-year hiatus due to injury, Vitaly Klitschko returned to boxing in 2008 and has since emphatically reclaimed his place as one of the dominant big men of his era. Klitschko is a cold, calculated, cerebral killer. Always in superb physical condition, the 40-year-old Vitaly has shown little signs of slowing down. Now he travels to Poland to take on one of the best heavyweights in the world, not named Klitschko. <laughs> Former light heavyweight and cruiserweight titleist Tomasz Adamek has spent the last two years constructing his heavyweight credentials. Standing his ground, letting his hands go, showing no fear. For the 34-year-old native of Poland, that campaign culminates in a chance to break the Klitschko stranglehold on the division and send shockwaves through the sport. Klitschko is a great champion, but now my time is come. I am ready to show for everyone. I am much stronger than Thomas Adamek. Live from Poland, it's Vitaly Klitschko versus native son Tomasz Adamek on World Championship Boxing, next. Adrian Phillips Ballroom in historic Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey for a special Twinight World Championship Boxing doubleheader. First, we will be bringing you, live from Poland within the next hour, the heavyweight championship showdown, or heavyweight title showdown, I should say, between Vitaly Klitschko, the older brother of the two Klitschkos who ruled the heavyweight division, and Poland's Tomas Adamek getting a chance to try for the biggest score of his life in front of the citizens of the nation where he grew up and began his amateur and professional boxing careers. Adamic now hails from northern New Jersey, where in Newark he has become an American franchise. But today he is all Polish, as before a crowd of Poles, sprinkled perhaps with a few Ukrainians, he takes on one of the two prides of Ukraine, Vitaly Klitschko. Vitaly, at age 40, trying to extend an unbeaten streak late in his career, which followed his return to the sport after a layoff due to injuries, a long layoff in the middle of this decade, which appeared to have terminated his heavyweight importance, but turned out to be only a recess. Since he's come back, he's not only won every fight, he's won every round. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We're very excited to welcome you to this two-installment Boxing Day on HBO. First, we're going to be taking you to Poland to see Klitschko and Adamek. Later tonight at 11, or excuse me, 10.30 Eastern and 10.30 Pacific time, 10.30 on both coasts, we'll have the World Championship Boxing live telecast featuring Yuri Orkus Gamboa, number one featherweight in the world. He'll be defending that 126-pound distinction against Mexican veteran Daniel Ponce de Leon. Also on that show, we'll give you a videotape replay of the fight you are about to see live from Wroclaw, Wroclaw, Poland, where Vitaly Klitschko is defending his portion of the heavyweight title against Tomas Adamek. And let's take a look at the heavyweight neighborhood in which the fight will be taking place. 
At the top of the graphic, you see the two Klitschkos who have ruled the division for several years now. Vitali has one title belt. Vladimir, with three title belts, is seen by most as the number one man in the division. Adamic has risen to become the number one contender. Uh, Alexander Povetkin, after a long layoff, recently won an eliminator against Ruslan Shigaev to get back into the picture. Robert Helenius of Finland is the first great Nordic heavyweight, and he's making a splash in Europe within the past year, similar to the splash that was made here in the United States a couple of years ago by Chris Ariola, before Ariola was halted in Staples Center in Los Angeles by Vitaly Klitschko. Now turning live to HBO, boxing analyst Max Kellerman. Uh, Max, as I mentioned, most people regard Vladimir Klitschko as the number one heavyweight. He's the younger brother. Vitaly's number one in the family as the older brother. And how do you assess him in recent heavyweight history? Think about this, but really think about it. With over 40 professional fights at the age now of 40, historically old for any division, Vitaly Klitschko has never trailed on the scorecards at the conclusion of a fight. Think about that. Two losses. His first to Chris Bird. He was way up on the cards. He retired because he threw out his shoulder. Many in the North American boxing media, including me, said this demonstrates that Vitaly Klitschko doesn't have the necessary intestinal fortitude to really become a dominant heavyweight. Well, Klitschko seemed to get that message training later in the United States and hearing the criticism clearly internalized it and showed against Lennox Lewis in a fight in which he was ahead but badly cut over his eye. In the sixth round when they tried to stop the fight, he vehemently protested in the corner, really genuinely wanted to keep fighting. His face just didn't cooperate. It was falling apart. Vladimir Klitschko has more wins against top opposition than Vitaly, but he's been knocked out multiple times. And Vitaly Klitschko tonight is the favorite against maybe the third best heavyweight in the world, and not a favorite by a little bit, Jim, a substantial, overwhelming favorite to win. Well, the coincidence, you mentioned how Vitaly's courage can never now be questioned. Another fighter whose courage cannot be questioned is Tomas Adamek. And Emmanuel, as a light heavyweight and a cruiserweight, he was a face-first destroyer and a very brave one. Since he's moved up to the heavyweight division where he's tiny, he has changed his style. I see him jumping around from spot to spot, entering at angles, throwing punches and bunches, very similar to what Michael Spinks was able to pull off about 25 years ago against Larry Holmes. Can Adamic do what Spinks was able to do? He can do it, but it's going to be very difficult. First of all, there's a major difference between Michael Spinks when he was fighting Larry Holmes because it was only one inch difference in height. In the fight tonight, we have Adamek is about five inches shorter than Vitaly Klitschko. In addition to Vitaly being a tall fighter who fights tall, he utilizes his height. He'll bend forward, let you punch in. He'll take his body back away from you. Punch and move you around as he's doing that. But Adamek is fighting the type of a fight that he has to fight to win the fight, which is to move, change directions. From the time that he left the cruiserweight and went to the heavyweight, they made plans and made it to fight a Klitschko. So they brought in tall fighters, and Roger Bloodworth came in, and he changed his style to be able to move and try to utilize the balance that he could get in speed to win a championship fight. He's got to try to win on a decision, but in particular with this crowd. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Vitaly Klitschko and Tomas Adamek as they get ready to go into the ring in Poland. And you'll see the six-year age difference, the five inch height difference than Emmanuel cited between Vitaly and Adamic. An arm length advantage of four inches measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. A 33, no check it, 27 pound weight uh, advantage for Vitaly and Vitaly was surprisingly light coming into the fight, obviously making a calculated decision to trim his weight a little bit in, in favor of movement and quickness against the smaller fighter. Now let's go to Michael Buffer in the arena in Poland. Tomasz, heute schreibst du Boxgeschichte. Hol dir den Titel. 
So we're looking at the In the Arena build-up there in Poland for the native son, Adamek. And we should mention that this is a brand new stadium. This is the first international event to take place there. It will seat more than 40,000 people. The crowd is expected to be standing room only. Everybody in Poland who could somehow gain access to this fight is there. And uh, it should be a tremendous environment, particularly for the home fighter. Well, earlier today, Jim, I spoke to Vladimir Tesco. Vladimir, who's very nervous, naturally said, because the crowd and excitement is beyond anything that they have saw, particularly where they've always fought in the situations where they was like favorite. Even when Vitaly fought Lennox, we still had a great turnout. But this crowd over here is very intimidating. And Latimer says 45,000 people. And that's because they can't get another 1,000 in. Yeah, Max, I've always said that night in 2003, when Vitaly Klitschko fought Lennox Lewis on relatively short notice as a substitute for Kirk Johnson in Los Angeles, we learned how many Ukrainians there were in Southern California. And it was a really exciting fight. And that's something about European promoters. When they promote these enormous fights, they have a tremendous pre-show, as we're seeing here. And sometimes the pyrotechnics before the show outstrip the pyrotechnics once the fight begins. As was the case in Hamburg when David Hay had his much ballyhooed showdown with Vladimir Klitschko. As is often the case in Klitschko fights. But here we have in Adamic, a fighter with a real fighter's heart. And Vitaly Klitschko has been involved in some knockdown, drag-out type fights. So maybe we get some pyrotechnics once the bell sounds here as well. We expect an enthusiastic reception now for Adamic as he slowly makes his way into the ring. Mentioned that he's become a franchise in northern New Jersey, uh, fighting at the new arena in Newark and uh, developing an audience, Emmanuel, not only among Polish immigrants and working class, class whites in uh, northern New Jersey, but also he's pretty much the dominant fighter in an all-black gym and has generated an audience among African-American boxing fans as well. That is very true, Jim. I have a lot of friends of mine. So one of my fellow trainers, James Ali Bashir, who lives there, he says they love him over there in New York, meaning the black people over there. But, you know, the Polish fans are some of the most emotionally boisterous fans in the world, right up there with the British fans. I remember when Lennox Lewis was fighting Andrew Galata, and even though Galata was not a big superstar on the level the way he is right now, we could not believe when we came out here in Atlantic City, the red and white flags were just unbelievable because Lennox thought he would have a big following because, you know, with the Canadian, the British, you know, and the Jamaican all over here in the East Coast, but the Polish people were jammed out in support of Galata. Indeed, uh, Tomas Adamek's first assignment in the heavyweight division, Max, was against Galata. He knocked him out. That was a rite of passage for him. Maybe not impressive to American fans who remember all of Galata's wipeouts, but he needed it. Well, he was just moving up in weight, and it was in Poland, and he didn't just knock him out. He totally destroyed Galata, and at that point, the affections for Galata in Poland were transferred to Tomas Adamek. So there he is in the ring. And you saw on the graphic the 27-pound weight disadvantage he'll be operating with against Vitaly. Frankly, he's been in against much larger men. He was outweighed 70 pounds in his last fight by Kevin McBride. The defending you, you know, world champion. And now here comes Vitaly's walk-in. And one thing uh, we've only briefly mentioned here, Emmanuel, is the four-year layoff. Vitaly took away from the ring when it appeared he was retired for good in the middle of this decade. Some were surprised when he came back. Since then, it's been an extended winning streak. How important was the layoff in developing the circumstances for how good Vitaly is now? But Jim, when Vitaly was traded for the fight with Hossein Rockman, he asked me to come out to California to observe his training because he was not that satisfied. So I went out and he didn't like, look too good in his training. So later that afternoon, he met with me in a room and he says, what do you think of my sparing? I said, I did not like it. He says, Emmanuel, I will tell you something. I'm having more problems with my body as a result of injuries that I sustained when I was in the kickboxing before I got into boxing on this level. And uh, as a result, my opponents are not, and my sparing partners, neither one of us, competitive to me as my own body is. Shortly after he announced his retirement from boxing, had four year rest, his body healed up, I think, completely, and he's came back better than ever. The Klitschkos are their own promoters. Because of their prominence in the sport, they are among the dominant promoters in Europe. Because of Vitaly's economic clout in Germany, the Klitschkos could have insisted 
that this fight take place in Hamburg or Mannheim or one of their other regular haunts. And it's because Vitaly Klitschko and his brother are sportsmanlike enough to understand what's good for boxing that they elected to go along with the emotional tide of this and hold the fight in Adamek's home country. Where there is a Polish pay-per-view that they're hoping they can establish there. Um, considering that a huge percentage of Poland has watched Adamek when he's fought in the past. Outside of fight Adamek, the Polish fans are some of the biggest fans that have supported the Klitschko's. But all of the fights we've had in Germany, they, they bring a big contingent. I mean, their television broadcasts have been phenomenal. Surely there are thousands of Poles in the stadium today who are quite accustomed to having rooted for the Klitschko's, both of them, for the last 10, 15 years, and will now be rooting against Vitaly for the first time in their boxing fan lives. This is the only star that they have. It's not like they have two or three star fighters from Poland. It's Adam Heck and nothing. So they're going to give all of that support for him. Something Vitaly Klitschko says he well understands and appreciates. But of course, he expected the crowd to be against him in Los Angeles when he fought Lennox Lewis. And by about round four, they were very demonstrably mostly with him. And part of that was the visual of Klitschko bleeding from that eye and fighting on in spite of it. And at the age of 40, um, he's prone to cuts, he's prone to injury, as you and Emmanuel point out. And Adamic with his in-and-out style we've seen at heavyweight and his precise slashing kind of punching, that might maybe gives him his best chance to win. A different kind of challenge for Vitaly, who for the most part in the past few years, Emmanuel, has been beating up big men like himself. That is true, but you know, that Vitaly, this is a very small guy. That's, to me, it's just very hard to see Adamac doing too much with a guy he can't even reach up if the guy asks him, would you just wipe my face off? But it's going to be a challenge, though. All right, now we'll stay quiet as they bring you the two national anthems, Poland and Ukraine. And after that, a 10 count for the victims of the recent hockey plane crash in Russia. Gentlemen, your attention, please. At this time, we must acknowledge the tragic loss of 43 athletes and staff from Russia who perished three days ago in an air accident. A moment of silence, please, as we honor their memory.
May they rest in peace. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Panye Panovia Viteme, welcome to a moment in history. Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Presented by K2 Promotions, KMG, and Main Events and brought to you in association with SMG, Regional Vice President Michael Brill, and the city of Wroclaw, Polska, Mayor Rafa Dukiewicz. Sanctioned by the BDB, President Tomas Putz, Supervisor at ringside Artur Ellenson, and the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Joe Dwyer. At ringside, the three judges scoring. From the United States, Dwayne Ford. From Finland, Asa Litosari. And from Canada, Craig Metcalf. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee from Italy, Massimo Baravecchio. And now, the moment in history has arrived. This is the premier event at Stadion Miaski, the first World Heavyweight Championship to be held in Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, from Wrocław, Polska, Pani e Panowie. Uh, let's get her ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black with orange, official weight, 98 kilograms. Professional record, 45 fights, 44 victories, including 28 knockouts. From Gilovica, Polska, the former light heavyweight world champion, the former cruiserweight world champion, and the WBC number one ranked heavyweight challenger in the world. The Polish warrior, Tomasz Kula. No rabbit punch, no head butt, no low blow. Check your hands and good luck. This fight has not played to the kind of fanfare, at least not in the U.S., that Vladimir's fight against David Hay did. Won't be tough to top that one. Won a very good fight. But can these do, two guys do something better than that? Can they give us something to talk about? once the bell rings. I think it's possible we're safe in absolutely guaranteeing it'll be a better fight than Vladimir versus Hay just because of the way Adamic fights. Round one begins. 
Maravecchi of the Italian referee sauntering out of the way as Vitalik Klitschko, as usual, sets up at center ring and begins to measure his man. The Klitschko jam, short and abrupt. It's not pretty, it's tremendously effective. Just studying the facial expression of Adam Eck, he doesn't feel comfortable with this situation at all. I think the size of uh, uh, Vitaly and also the that Vitaly is controlling the distance. He's keeping him at a distance where he can jab and Adam Eck cannot mount his attack. Nothing about Vitaly Klitschko is pretty. It's exactly. just effective. But he's effective. He moves in and as soon as you punch him, he creates a space by moving back just enough to get you out of position. And he can hit you with punches while he's moving back and move you out of balance. Also. Hard right hand up the middle by Vitaly Klitschko. Adamic has not been able to get started yet. We're a minute into the fight, and it has been, so far, another Vitaly Klitschko whitewash. Now Tomas Adamic jumps inside as it becomes clear he is going to have to do to be competitive. He just can't stand out there at distance and take Vitaly's jab, Emmanuel. Now Vitaly is a very difficult guy to fight. He looks awkward. But he has a good sense of feeling when a guy is going to punch. And he'll move at the same time, usually in a direction that will neutralize the guy's punch as he's coming in. Is his sense of space and distance one of his greatest assets? One of his greatest assets. He's a tall man who fights tall. And here we see him cutting off the ring as Adamic tries to circle. The great quote that came out of Hamburg three months ago. Vladimir Klitschko said, I had to learn how to fight. My older brother was born to fight. Vitaly is a very tough man, believe me. Mentally, uh, he's maybe one of the toughest guys that's ever been in the heavyweight division. I would rate him right up there with George Foreman and those type guys as far as his mental makeup. Knocks Adamic back into the ropes, and as soon as Adamic leaves the ropes, Vitaly stuffs another jab into his face. I couldn't tell if he hurt Adamic with that right hand or if Adamic's feet were simply too close together. A lot of nervous energy from Adamic. Not many effective punches as he gets his first taste of Vitaly Klitschko's remarkable ability to command the ring. Harold Letterman's phrase, ring generalship, is seldom better exhibited yes. than by what Vitaly does. Ahead. Yeah, just the mere strength and the size of Vitaly. Even glazing blows have tremendous effect on Adamek. Copy box numbers in round one. And here's another look at the right hand toward the end of the round. Well, no, I believe that was the first right hand earlier in the round. Copy box totals in round one. Klitschko 13 of 47. Adamek 8 of 22. Tomas Adamek won't have a chance if he can only throw 22 punches in a round. But that was just the first of the Schedule 12. He might not have a chance if he tries to Michael Spinks, be Michael Spinks to Vitaly's Larry Holmes, given the size disparity. Yep. What we've seen in heavyweight history is Jack Dempsey jump on Jess Willard um, to try to mitigate the reach advantage. Uh, Adamic, I don't think, is going to fare very well at this distance. He's going to have to, as you mentioned, Jim, negate that distance and maybe it's by being much more aggressive than this. Well, Jack Dempsey may have been the hardest puncher pound for pound in the history of the sport. I don't think anything Adam Mack is going to do in this fight is going to negate the advantage of Vitaly. Vitaly is outboxing him and when he misses a punch he moves Adam Mack's head where he can't come back with a counter punch. Well, the difference is too throughout heavyweight history guys like Chess Willard or Primo Carnera we're not very skilled at this, at the comparable size to Vitaly. Vitaly, 
though, as we mentioned, he looks awkward, is quite skilled. Well, when the Klitschko's first came along, it was clear they would be a problem for American heavyweights because they were so big and both athletic. What we didn't know then was that both would become brilliant ring technicians and tacticians as well. Those bodies are impressive, but at the end of the day, it's their minds which have created the big gap in the division. And that's right, and Vitaly and Latimer are very mentally strong guys. And as you said, when I think Vitaly was fighting with uh, Ariola, you American guys want to compete against the Criscos, you're going to have to be prepared to be boxers 365 days in a year. That's exactly and many right. of our American fighters are not willing to make that commitment. A lesson Ariola incidentally says he has learned and certainly appears to have inculcated to some extent. His body looks a lot better than it did a couple of years ago when Vitaly roughed him up. You know, in this round, Vitaly's landing some good straight shots, but about 30 seconds ago, Adamic landed a left hook that I think bothered Vitaly a little bit. And there's a right hand by Adamic. They're starting to exchange a little more. So Adamic perhaps getting his feet wet and developing a little more of a comfort zone as he begins to mix in some of his own punches with Vitaly's thudding right hand shot right there. Adamic had no chance to win this fight unscathed. He's going to have to eat some punches. The question is, how will he react to it? How much does he want to win? But don't forget, he's not a puncher. We talked about Michael Spinks going against Larry Holmes. At least Michael was a pretty good banger, in addition to being a fairly tall man. This is a much more competitive round than round one. That's the good news for Adamic. The good news for Vitaly Klitschko is that he's handled that competition well enough to again win the round. And, and he crushes Adamic with that right hand, almost knocked him down. Tomas Adamic has the guts of a burglar. He's going to need them all tonight. Should have been a knockdown, Jim. The ropes held him up. Listen, you can't step straight back on this guy. Yes. You were right. Rope sailed him up. Right, Emmanuel? that Adamic raised his punch output from 22 to 38 in the second round and landed 13 of them. Not bad. Klitschko, however, was 22 of 61, including 13 of his 44 jabs. When a big man throws 44 jabs in a round, it's going to be very hard to control it. Harold Letterman scores it a 10-8 round, clearly observing, as Max did, that that should have been a knockdown when Adamic went into the ropes. Emmanuel, as you point out, Michael Spinks was virtually the same height as Larry Holmes when he upset Holmes for the heavyweight title, moving up from light heavyweight. He had a similar reach to Holmes, not that much shorter, and so he could box from the outside, jump in and out. That is not how Adamic is built. He's going to have to figure something else out because at this distance, he's just going to clock it. You're right, Max, and I don't think he can do much more than that. The jabs ain't him up and after a while, he'll be so preoccupied watching the jabs that when the right hand comes, he won't even see the right hand. So how about moving within the range of the right hand, taking some sting off of it? But he's going to have to just come in and just try to make it a brawl, but I don't think he's capable of doing that. Vitaly is very good at controlling the distance and the, and the pace of a fight. Vitaly throw his right hand you'll see how well he understands the importance of leverage for a taller fighter he gets that right elbow up into the air and throws the punch down to increase its speed and its power one of the things that he and his brother does when they, they have a little workout they work out together on like a concentration they would box maybe just moving around a ring with each other without punching 
and never letting their eyes lose focus of the opponent. That's one of the things that both of them do very well. They have continually focused on the opponent and everything that's going on in concentration without ever blinking. Yeah, and, and Vitali's ability to throw with his opponent shows that his reflexes are extraordinary. Yes, very, 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 very anticipation of where a guy's head is going to be before he punches. Look, in the heavyweight division, size is not unlike speed or punching power or skills. It's a, an advantage that can be used to your favor. Here, a 40-year-old man, I know he has a huge size advantage, but he's 40 years old, is fighting with his left hand at his knee, practically, and beating the hell out of the third best guy in the division. Well, I, I, I can't remember. When was the last time we saw a heavyweight with hands down at his hips like this? He, do, he does that just to get you to punch at him, then he pulls back. So, Lou, you see there, he does that just enough to make you punch. Well, Adam Adamic's going to have to take that invitation and try to load up on something. Don't forget to watch the finale of 24-7 Mayweather Ortiz, Friday night, September 16 at 9 Eastern and Pacific. And stay tuned for 24-7 Overtime Live, immediately following our live commentary and special guests will show up on that telecast on HBO. It all leads up to next Saturday night's welterweight showdown between Floyd Mayweather and Victor Ortiz on HBO Pay-Per-View. CompuBox numbers through three rounds. Vitaly Klitschko, 52 of 169. Tomas Adamek, 34 of 97. Adamek actually landing at a higher rate now after having landed some punches in the second and third round. Klitschko, 30 of 119 jabs. So far in the fight. Harold, how do you have it scored as we come to the fourth round? Okay, Jim, I've got a 3-0, 30-26, Vitaly Klitschko. Now, Jim, he does deserve an extra point for that knockdown in, his, in the second round, which uh, Baravecchio didn't call a knockdown. I mean, he clearly knocked him off his feet into the ropes. The ropes were holding up a diamond. But Vitaly Klitschko, it's amazing. In round one, he had that left hand up. Just like Max said, from round two on, he's thrown that up to him. He drops it, and, and he comes up with it. Or he brings it up, and he throws it straight. Either way, jabbing Adamic to death. Three to nothing, Vitaly Klitschko. Harold, because the referee, Baravecchia, did not rule that a knockdown in the second round, isn't it probable that the three official scorers over there in Poland have it 30 to 27? What it, what it means is, is that, you know, they don't have to call the 10-8. They could have called the 10-9. On the other hand, they do have the right to do what I did, call the 10-8. Gotcha. Because in Harold's judgment, Adamic was badly enough hurt by that punch that Vitaly won the round that but, big. But the thing is, is that he really, really took him off his feet. That's, that's the reason you're going to give an extra point. Yeah, I was in agreement with you, Max, that the ropes held Adamic up. Most likely. Well, you saw him wrap his left arm over the rope and grip it. Yeah. That's the telltale sign. Good right hand by Adamic, and the crowd comes wild a lot for that. Hard right hand by Vitaly Klitschko. Now we see Adamic, his, his stance, Emmanuel, is a little more aggressive. Yes, he's got to fight more aggressive. Just sitting back, backing up and trying to anticipate what Vitaly is going to do would never work. That's to, to, that's it, to Adamic's yeah. credit, by the way. Yes, if he, what you prepared for isn't working, you got to go to a plan B. Absolutely. And plan A was going to lead to a slow death. This may lead to a quicker one, but this, at least it gives him a chance to be in the fight. This is his only chance. But, you know, when you have a tall man standing five inches taller than you, it's very hard to see those right hands. Even though he holds his right hand down, meaning Vitaly, when he shoots it, a lot of times you don't see it still. And he's keeping it down so he can try to throw it, mixing up uppercuts with his right hand. And, Emmanuel, Adamic's face is starting to break apart under Vitaly's punishment. Is he aware of that? Well, he's broken the part in a lot of fights that came through, so that's part right. of his tradition. It doesn't bother yeah. him. He's a very courageous yeah, fighter. He's a true warrior. You know, you watch Adamic throw the hook. <laughs> He's so scared of Vitaly's right hand by now 
that he doesn't step in with a good quick hook, Emmanuel. It's yes. it, he, he, he's kind Tenet of yes, slowing yes, it up yes, tentatively, yes, ten, and therefore it's not landing. Uh, uh, Vitaly is able to get his right hand up to block it. When Vitaly pulls back, a lot of punches of the crowd is going crazy. I just barely hitting the gloves or shoulders of Vitaly. That's the way he fights. The crowd is going in, but they're not landing that plane. What's interesting in looking at the reach that Adam X reach is, I think, longer than Vitaly's. It looks that way. Yeah, even though Vitaly's arms are big, no, it doesn't because yeah. he, no, he's still too tall. Fritz Sedunik, the Talik Lichko's trainer, speaks to him in German as you gather there. One of the four languages in which Vitaly could do this business. He could do it in English, he could do it in Ukrainian, he could do it in Russian, or he can do it the way he does here in German. Yes. Vladimir, same thing. I think they speak five languages. Six if you include boxing. <laughs> Fluent. Round five of a scheduled 12. Tomas Adamic gets off first in the fifth round, and the crowd once again roars for that. As we mentioned in the last round, Adamic clearly seeming to have made a decision to be more aggressive and step inside more. Has to do something to counter the effectiveness of that jab. I think he's adjusted a little bit to the height differential, which seemed to really, really bother him a lot at the beginning. And he's more comfortable now with the height of Vitaly, and he's adjusted and fighting better now than he did earlier. Also seems that Dominic's going a little more to that straight right hand. Um, I, I, maybe, Emmanuel, could it be that he feels less vulnerable to Vitaly's right by throwing his own right? No, I wouldn't really say that. It seems like he's getting more comfortable with the fight and everything, and, and punching and fighting better and thinking better. We mentioned the courage of Tomas Adamek. His first showcase in the United States was in Chicago in 2006 on the undercard of Lehman Brewster and Andrew Galata fighting against Paul Briggs of Australia. It was one of the most blood-curdling fights of the last decade, partially because in the first round, Adamek's nose was crushed, broken into several pieces by a Briggs shot, and his, his nose poured blood for the entire 12 rounds hey, while he was beating Briggs. He's been given a lot of blood to us in fights throughout the recent years. Never complained, and that's what he's known for, and that's what a lot of people, and including you, said that this would be a much better fight than the hey, Vladimir Kisco just because of the mental makeup and the courage that he has. So Already far, has it has been. been better, yeah. Already has been. Speaking of bloody noses, by the way. It's like Adamic's uh, showing some red under there right now. Well, he's been taking a lot of jabs. I mean, he may throw punches and the crowd goes crazy, but the really effective punch in this fight has been still the jabs coming from Vitaly. See, now he's mixed up, now he shot a right uppercut, and then he went back with a jab. So he's got Adam Mack very confused now because he's doing so many different things now. Instead of just doing one thing, he's mixing up his punch. He's throwing hooks, he's throwing uppercuts. He may have cuffed him with a right, then he threw a straight right. And to get physically fatigued and also mentally getting fatigued, it's, it's a tough situation to be in. Everybody tends to compare Vladimir Klitschko to Lennox Lewis. Because of their bodies and their styles, it's an easy comparison to make. I think the fighter Batali most resembles is George Foreman in his second career. <laughs> Fighting at his own pace, using brains as much as brawn. Yep, and not looking all that classic, but very effective. Absolutely. Good right hand in there by Adama. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, here you see right now a beautiful jab, which was, I think, still been the signature punch in the fight. And you'll see right on, you see him step throwing right back, hands step and left hooks. Step to the right. Yeah. Okay, if you step to the left, then use that jab. Use the jab and put something behind it. You caught him with a nice hook right hand. You gotta do more. He, they're gonna get him the rounds. That's You're listening to Adamic's excellent trainer, you're Roger Bloodworth. He worked in the past the with uh, Andrew Bomada, with Fernando Vargas, and several other fighters whom you've seen on HBO's World Championship and Boxing. And Pernell Whitaker. Bloodworth is a technical trainer. Very good trainer. We are in Wrocław, Poland, for the battle between Vitalik Klitschko and Tomas Adamic. Easy for you to distinguish the two. Adamic is the smaller fighter on the left. Klitschko is the larger fighter on the right. As we go into the sixth of a scheduled 12, according to Harold Letterman and, frankly, to the naked eye, Vitalik Klitschko has won every round, repeating the pattern which has obtained ever since he came back from his four-year layoff a few years ago. You heard Roger Bloodworth in the corner tell Adamic they're going to give him the rounds. That's just the way it is. The reason they're going to give Vitaly the rounds is because he's beating the hell out of Adamic. And I don't think the change in strategy by degrees of Adamic getting slightly more aggressive is going to change anything other than to expedite his demise. Tremendous right hand shot. And this time, the Italian referee does correctly rule it a knockdown as the ropes kept Adamic up. In the beginning of the round, you saw Vitaly throw right uppercuts. Right uppercuts. Then he, then he throws a straight right hand over top. And he's hitting him because Adamic is there to be hit at long range. At a certain point, Adamic's corner has got to tell him, you got to rush him, you got to get inside and stay in his chest and throw caution to the wind. Vitaly's only the third fighter ever to knock Adamic down. The slick, quick Tad Dawson did it in outclassing Adamic in his only loss in the light heavyweight division. And Paul Briggs knocked him down in the first round of the 12-round war in Chicago that I described a while ago. Right now, Adamic is wobbling, uh, yeah, and Vitaly's looking to finish. Vitaly's fighting like a big, big man beating up a little man. That's what this really comes down to. And it's, it's not even a competitive contest anymore. Stop, 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 stop. Adamic lurches forward and lands a body shot. But they are becoming fewer and farther between now. These are heavyweights and things can turn with one punch. But, but, you know, but the, the Adamic is death and ten by the cruiserweight fight a super heavyweight, not even a regular heavyweight. Right. You know, and this is, is, is just too much of a disparity in the size. And the and point particular is with the skill the, on top of Vitaly. The point is, even though a fight can change in one punch, it's not one punch that Adamic's getting hit with. At this yeah. point, it's dozens clean in the head by a nearly 250-pound man. Yeah. Well, the thuddingly obvious point is continually underlined, and it shows up again today. And in all really, probability, and if, and there's only one heavyweight in the world who could really challenge Vitaly Klitschko, and that's the guy he's never going to fight, his brother Vladimir. And Vladimir said if we ever fought Emmanuel, one of us would end up permanently damaged for life. It's the way we used to fight because of the competitive spirit in us. There's one more out there, I think, that would make an interesting matchup with either Klitschko in the next year or so. But did you see what Vitality, whenever he lands a punch, he moves you with that same punch as he, that's why you can't get close. He throws a right and he'll move your head after he, if he lands or misses, and that way you can't get inside. Are you about to say Robert Hellenius, uh, Max? I am. All right, let's talk about it in the next round. Here you see a beautiful straight right hand for Vitaly, right at the time when Adamak was kind of looking for punches to come underneath. Perfect right hand. And the fact that he's still standing up and fighting attests to the fact that he's got a tremendous chin. So that was the best round of the fight for Vitaly Klitschko. And they've all been good. And you wonder how much more Adamic can take, quite frankly. Given his past record, he could probably go the full 12 and take all of the punishment. But he seems to be edging toward trying to be more aggressive, which again could lead to a shorter fight. CompuBox numbers in the sixth round. Vitaly Klitschko, 32 out of 69. Vitaly again, the same right hand again. You know, and he, and he turned his full body weight into those shots there, too. There's no half punching. He's turning all the way through and committing on those punches. He was 32 out of 69. His high levels for the fight 
Adamic was only four out of 23. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, six to nothing, 60 to 52, Vitaly Klitschko. I mean, boy, did we get a good view with that thudding right hand that Vitaly Klitschko threw in round number six. I mean, he's got some power out right here. Another one right there. I mean, Vitaly landed that champ, piling up the points, controlling the fight, doing everything he has to do to win each and every round so far. Really one-sided fight. Give Vitaly an extra point in rounds two and round six because he took him off his feet. Six to nothing, Vitaly Klitschko. See that every time that Adam X towards the move forward, Vitaly takes that little step back. Just enough to keep him off balance. And you know, and he continues to see it works his jab. In between all of the other big punches, he still goes back to his jab. Something a lot of fighters don't do. Commentary here can become redundant, like the fight. Um, Adam, it can keep doing this, and this can keep happening. Or someone can say, forget about any tactical changes. You need a basic strategic change. Go get this guy. It's your only shot. That apparently has not yet happened, although Adam, it's not like he's fighting without heart. He's taking a terrible beating, and he's continuing to try. He just needs a new approach. See what he did with his right hand after he threw it there, he moved his head again. Every time Vitaly throws a right hand, he uses the same hand to move the opponent's head so he can't come back with a counter punch. A subtle skill. Yep. A lot of the good big tall fighters did that. Muhammad Ali did it very effective too. Yeah, but Ali would actually back away from punches because he was quick enough to do it. Yeah, Vitaly great. can't do he that. He doesn't have the first He has to though. rely on skill. Yeah, keep making, maintaining the distance and the space is what he's been. That's what he did just there. That's what he does continue. See there? He doesn't block the punches. He pulls away from the punches instead of just blocking them, which would hold his opponent's weight up. Why Adamic has to leap in with one of those left hooks like he means it, Emmanuel. Yes, he had to leap in for See that? As soon as he came in, Vitaly pulled back and started to jab. Emmanuel, you've done so much thinking and so much talking about the strategy of fighting big. How to stay tall, be tall, and fight from a tall stance. Of the three excellent heavyweights in recent years who've done that, Lennox Lewis, Vladimir Klitschko, and Vitaly Klitschko, and you've worked with all three in the gym at one time or another. Which one adheres best to the principles of big man fighting? I would say Latimer, yeah. Latimer, he just, uh, Lennox was the one that would be more explosive because he would take risks and explode more. But, but for just staying tall and controlling, Latimer is the best control man I've ever worked with. Well, that was a better round because when he stepped back, he stepped up. back from four years off with injury in 2008. This will be the 70th round of heavyweight boxing for Vitaly Klitschko. And arguably, he's won them all. It's That's just amazing. amazing. It's just amazing. At his age. Now, he's not fighting the same level of opponent until tonight that Vladimir's been fighting. But Vitaly is a very dominating guy. As soon as the bell rings, he sets the pace. He's busy. He has a great knockout record, but the record is basically in percentage off of 
him being so busy and systematically destroying guys, whereas Vladimir is much more explosive. He can do everything with just one punch, but he's not aggressive enough the way his Vitaly is. No, it's a great point. Vitaly Klitschko has the highest knockout percentage in the history of the heavyweight division, and he's done that without having the kind of one-punch power that, for instance, Sonny Liston or... Uh, Lennox Lewis or George any Foreman. number of uh, George Foreman, any number of other heavyweights have had. No, he nope. sets but he sets the tempo. As soon as the fight starts, he comes out right away with his hands down. He starts jabbing and throwing things and making his opponent get to think about what he's going to do. I, I, I was at Madison Square Garden. I watched him beat the hell and knock out, beat the hell out of a knockout Kirk Johnson. He won a real rough and tumble fight against the very explosive, dangerous Corey Sanders. He went toe to toe with Lennox Lewis. He fights compared to Vladimir like he looks, a little more rugged. But the difference is, Vladimir, you could have a party going on at a house with lights on and everything, and all of a sudden the whole room goes black. And you know that's Vladimir's in the house. He's the only one that can do that with one single punch. A bigger one-punch puncher than Vitaly. Yeah, but Vitaly, but also, but Vitaly is a fragile. He looks less cold, fragile, and insecure the way he fights as compared to Vitaly. Oh, well, there's no question that Vladimir has the more vulnerable chin, don't you think? Well, the history will show that. Yes. So the way you stop maybe that, that's don't why, get hit. Maybe that's why Vladimir has become, as you say, the best at fighting the big man principal, because he needs to be. It's all about not letting your chin go beyond your front knee. Yes, sir. The Klitschko's between them have not lost a fight in about seven years. And as you mentioned, Jim, even between them, they've barely lost a round. They've positively cleaned out the heavyweight division. Well, the but, debate... But, down goes Vitaly Klitschko. Oh, and the referee, Barabakia, is ruling it a slip. What happened? That was a very it's hard to tell what happened. We need a replay to determine, was there a punch? Why did Vitaly pull? I don't think it was a punch. I, think I didn't he, see a right hand. Was, I think he lost his balance when he was throwing a right hand. That was Mrs. Vitaly Klitschko standing up. Yes. In that, uh, in that ringside shot. Lovely woman, lives in Los Angeles with their three children, all of whom were born in the USA. Replay coming, we're told. Here we see what may have been the knockdown. He threw a right hand and got off balance. Uh, that looked to me like a knee went out or something, Emmanuel. Yeah, well, why did he fall? He threw his right, he turned his right leg over, looked like, and he twisted it right there. Very odd fall. Yeah, but it was definitely appeared. Yep, yeah, definitely to twist the back ankle and get that that uh, that foot off balance, and ultimately caused him to teeter over. Well, Look, if you're I, if you're 40 years old, you're vulnerable because your body starts to break down, as Emmanuel spoke about before the fight. You know, we talked about how Vitali's won every round since the comeback. If Adamic had managed to mix in a punch there. He might have gotten credit for a knockdown, and he might have won a round. He definitely would have gotten credit for a knockdown. That's the biggest concern that all of the people in Vitalis' camp is always worried about is his legs physically from, as I said, his days back when he was kickboxing. And yet another reason why Adamic needs to be in his chest making this a physical fight and not a boxing match from long range, which he cannot win. It's a great point. Klitschko's Achilles heel is his connective tissue. Tissue. He's had injuries to shoulders, knees, ankles, you know, all of the places where tendons and ligaments hold you together, Vitaly's had problems. So Adamic needed to put pressure on that body. As a result of that slip, or what do you call it, if I was in that Adamic's corner, I would tell him go all out now. Because whatever the weather was actually not for him to just throw a right hand and fall over and down, fall down, and try to take it, maybe something else wrong with his right leg. Well, the question came up among our production troops a couple of rounds ago, is Vitaly tiring? I don't think he's trying. I, I don't either. No, no. It's just how much punishment can Adamek take? And if Adamek does not really commit to the bum's rush and comes in tentatively as he's doing, he's going to get caught right on the end of those right hands as has been happening this round. We criticized the referee Barabekia for not ruling a knockdown in the second round when Vitaly knocked Adamek into the ropes. I guess we should give him credit for realizing at the end of that incident in the last round that there had been no punch. Hard to tell at first. Adamic looks very weary getting jabbed around the uh, ring 
here in the night. That was exactly where I was going to show. It looked very weird. It looked like this mental fatigue is set in also right now. As well as jabs are landing like right hands. Yeah, but Vitaly has never stopped jabbing. It's the one thing that I give him and Vladimir credit. They never stop jabbing. 44 jabs per round Vitaly has averaged in the fight. Back in the day when Lennox Lewis was controlling the heavyweight division, there was a statistical barometer via CompuBox. If Lennox threw 30 jabs in a round, you couldn't touch him. Nobody was near him. Nobody could beat him if he threw 30 jabs in a round. If he threw as few as 20, he was vulnerable. That was one of my favorite weapons of all the heavyweights I played as jabs. Very few people really utilize a jab nowadays. Well, George Foreman's greatest line when he was working with us, Emmanuel, this sport is easy if you have a jab. Yep. George had a very strong jab. Telephone pull. Very strong, stiff. He and Sonny Liston may have two of the stiffest jabs in the history of the heavyweight division. George threw it a little bit the way Vitali does, just sort of lifting yeah, his yeah. arm up and popping, popping it. Larry Holmes at, time jabbed, at times jabbed the same way from his hip if he felt in control of the fight. Larry Holmes, one of the most underrated and unappreciated heavyweights in history. He's in my top ten. Phenomenal And he fight. was a great jab. Well, you saw the graphic for Bernard Hopkins against Chad Dawson. Prior to today, Chad Dawson was the only man to have beaten Tomas Adamic in 45 fights. It appears that Vitaly Klitschko is well on the way to joining him in that distinction. In the ninth round, Klitschko 27 of 55 jabs. Adamic was reduced to 30 punches overall, landing nine. It's been another one-sided fight in favor of a Klitschko. What's new? How do you have it through nine? I agree with the theory that Klitschko haven't lost the round. I've got a nine to nothing, 90 to 79 Vitaly Klitschko. You know, Jim, the one thing that amazes me is that Thomas Adamic, I mean, if I were Thomas Adamic, I would come over the top with a right hand. I mean, throw it to me with this boom right hand. I, just wind up and let it go. And Adamic doesn't do it. I mean, you fight the guy that's big. He leans in a little. You notice how he leans in? I mean, if you're going to get him, you got to get him over the top of the right hand. Somehow or another, Adama just doesn't do it. And that amazes me. He's a mate, 9 to nothing. Vitaly Klitschko. When Adama does try to throw the right hand, all he does is get a shoulder. Vitaly leans into him, but when he punches, Vitaly always pulls away from him. So when he punches, he's gotten frustrated because he looks like he's there, but when he punches, he's not there. Now you see the target. Now you don't. Vitaly Klitschko. Yep. Meanwhile, if Klitschko does not score the knockout here, and maybe he does right here, but if he doesn't, doesn't Rocky Marciano move back into first place for heavyweight championship KO percentage? Could be. It's not over with. The referees get in the position to stop the fight. I don't see the point in this fight continuing. Yeah, but there was no point in the Shannon Briggs going, the fight going 12 rounds either. And it happened. Briggs wound up in a hospital for eight days after a referee allowed Vitaly to touch him up for 12 full rounds. And you wonder how Adamic's going to feel after this one. Well, there, there Adamic loaded up on something. Wobbles back into the ropes after a jab. How much longer can Adamic stand up in the face of all this? I think Adamic's corner is going to have to stop the fight. Yeah, he's not going to stop himself. That's it. Good and the stop. referee's going to do good. it. Excellent stoppage by yeah. the referee. The referee was getting in position for the last 30 or 40 seconds. And Adamic looks relieved.
another knockout. Again, by accumulation of punishment. Again, he won every round. Practically every second of every round. And that was against a guy who has made a spirited bid in the last three years to become the number three heavyweight in the world. Here's Beautiful Vitaly right finishing him off. Just too big and too good for this guy. But at this stage, he's mentally and physically worn out completely. And I'm quite sure he welcomed the stoppage himself. He stays ahead of Rocky Marciano. All-time heavyweight knockout percentage. Vitaly Klitschko. Well, this is interesting. I mean, I'll probably get in trouble for this one, Max, but Marciano went 49 and 0. Everybody talks about how weak the division is now. Marciano's biggest title defense was against Roland Lascarza. Don't you think the Klitschkos have fought the same kind of opposition that Rocky Marciano fought? In both cases, they fought who was available, and they both cleaned out the division. Although there was only one Marciano, there are two Klitschkos. Gives them a sort of unfair advantage. Here's the final copy box score. 230 to 89 and landed punches. More than doubled the thrown punches. Landed at a significantly higher percentage. Jabs next. Unbelievable show of jabbing. 140 of 414, 34%. You're going to win the fight if you throw 414 jabs and you land at that percentage. And oh, by the way, if you land at or close to 50% of your power punches, that's another surefire indicator. So the bottom line is Vitali had this one boxed every way imaginable. Punch zone will show us where Adamic took all the punishment. One hundred seventy-five punches to the upper head and 50 to the chin. Damas Adamic got hit 225 times on the head of the face tonight, and only three body shots landed by Vitali. Similar to what Vladimir did to David Hay. Vladimir didn't land a single body shot but completely touched up Hay around the head, just as did Vitaly here. I think I would disagree on those figures. I didn't see Vitaly get hit with 50 body shots himself. <laughs> I mean, Adam, I couldn't get close enough to do that. And I, and I thought if, uh, that Vitaly landed more body shots. I thought he landed about 10 good right hands to the rim. Vitaly hasn't been hit with 50 shots in his last five fights yes, combined. <laughs> Litchko landed 34 of his last 59 punches thrown, 58% to close the show. But what matters is the W. And the visible evidence on Adamic's face shows you how easily Vitali collected that. Roger Bloodworth dreamed for years he was going to get a heavyweight championship with Andrew Galata. Didn't happen. Adamic, he told us before this fight, is a far stronger, more resolute personality. Everybody knows that. But physically just too small. So we wait again for someone who's big enough, strong enough, brave enough, and smart enough to challenge either Klitschko. And Max, you suggest that the best hope may be Robert Hellenius of Finland. He's very big. He's athletic. I think he can punch. Most importantly, he throws punches in combination, which is rare for a big athletic heavyweight. He's a lot younger, especially than Vitali. And uh, Larry Merchant was saying during the Ariola fight that he had a hunch Ariola could maybe win because he's a real fighter, throws in combination, he's young, and Vitali's getting older. Maybe it was a little premature at that moment, but eventually Vitali's going to be too old. And Hellenius is a lot bigger than all their recent Klitschko opponents. And athletic. And undefeated. And when he knocks guys out, it ain't on a TKO stoppage. These guys are out cold when Hellenius knocks them out. We're waiting for the official particulars on the knockout here. Eventually, ring announcer Michael Buffer will step to the center of the ring and begin telling us about the victory for Vitali. But until that happens, we're filling, quite frankly, while you watch pictures from Poland. Another brave effort by Tomas Adamek. He didn't exactly back down. He wasn't David Hay, but he simply didn't have the guns necessary to go into the fight. Nor the wherewithal to switch strategy mid-fight and actually try to win. 
rather than just carry out a losing game plan. Coming up tonight on HBO Sports, live coverage from Atlantic City of Yuri Orcas Gamboa against Daniel Ponce de Leon. Gamboa will be defending his status as the number 126 pounder in the world. He's the best kind of champion in the sport, one unencumbered by meaningless title belts. You know, Vitaly Klitschko has the WBC belt and his brother has the other four or five belts. But Vitaly says, I have the belt that Muhammad Ali and Joe Lewis had, Larry Holmes had. So that's his consolation when everyone refers to his brother as having more of the belts and considered the number one. He says, I have the most important to me, the WBC. Fighters see that. Fighters don't pay as much attention as we journalists do to the current behavior of governing bodies, including that one. You would say that they're equally ridiculous. They take turns being increasingly outrageous. At this moment, maybe that belt is the second most outrageously incompetent or corrupt take your pick organization. Well, it appears that we're just about ready for Michael Buffer to give us the official size up of what happened here. He's waiting for a cue from Polish Ladies television. And now he's got it. Give you plenty of time. Let's acknowledge the heart and determination of this two-time world champion, the Polish warrior, Tomasz Adamek. Round number 10, the winner by TKO victory and still WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Dr. Eisenhaus, Vitaly Klitschko. So we come to the end of the first of our two boxing installments today. Let's quickly take a look at what's upcoming here at HBO Sports.